What's up, I'm Dave from Profitable.Tools, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything that's new in WordPress 5.8 without any fluff or filler, so let's get right into it. We're gonna start off by talking about native WebP image support. What a boring feature, but I've gotta put it at the front of the video to make you watch to the end for the really exciting stuff. So what the heck is WebP? It's a file format for images initially announced in 2010. Now it took them until 2018 to bring it up to version 1.0 and you probably started to notice around that time that there'd be certain images you try to save off of the web and then you couldn't open them natively on your computer. It was super annoying. Those were WebP images and now you can serve them right from WordPress. Now, why would you wanna do this? Well, WebP images have up to a 45% reduction in file size when compared to a PNG file. And WebP images are supported by 94% of web browsers, so it's generally safe to use. And when you add into the equation that WordPress is ending support for Internet Explorer completely by the end of 2021, WebP is looking like a pretty safe solution. Now, to be clear, you've been able to use WebP for quite a while with third-party tools. I've used ShortPixel and Gumlet. They will create WebP versions uh, and display them when possible. If a browser doesn't support it, they will show the JPEG or PNG equivalent. But now WordPress added native support. The only downside here is that WordPress won't convert your existing images over to WebP. So you'll have to rely on a tool like ShortPixel or Gumlet if you want to serve back catalog images that are all WebP file format. Hey, let's group all of the boring features at the beginning of the video. Duotone filters are now a thing inside of WordPress. You can now add Duotone filters to images and media blocks. This is great, I guess, if you actually do any sort of design work in WordPress. I can see myself maybe using it when I'm, you know, trying to edit a blog featured image and, you know, nothing was from the designer there, but I just don't think that most people are actually laying out web pages in Gutenberg quite yet. It's just not quite good enough for that. It's too slow and clunky. More on that in a little bit. Anyway, you can get these spiffy duo tone filters for no additional charge and WordPress is already free, so who can really complain about that? Next up, the widget area gets a fresh look. That's right, the widget area has a redesign. Now you might've thought that widgets would eventually be killed off like Charlie Sheen in Two and a Half Men, but WordPress is doubling down on the concept and they're bringing feature parity to blocks and widgets. That's right, you can now use blocks as widgets, which means you'll also be able to style them just like you would on your pages or posts. This should make widgets a lot more usable and the whole look of the widget section is a lot easier to use now. All right, now we're getting to some good stuff. There are some new full site editing blocks. As WordPress moves closer and closer to true full site editing, that means the header and the footer and the sidebar and the content area, you'll be able to edit all of that. Well, they've added some new blocks to make life easier as we move closer to that new reality. So in version 5.8, you're gonna find things like a site logo block, a tagline block, a site title block, post content, post date, you'll be able to make dynamic posts because of these blocks. So that is a really cool thing to see. I'll post a list of all of the new blocks as I'm kind of meandering here inside of this section. Oh, hey, guess what? Gutenberg sucks less now. That's right, I said it. Gutenberg is not my favorite experience on WordPress. I can do everything faster in Elementor and the pages we build convert just fine for our clients. So no, I don't really wanna hear about the code bloat and why I should switch over. That said, I am not ignorant. I understand that Gutenberg is the way forward, so I'm keeping my eye on it and you should too. In WordPress 5.8, Gutenberg sucks less. It's now easier to select the parent block when you have nested blocks. There is a redesigned list view so you can see all of the blocks on your page or post and you can now always see the parent block in the toolbar so there's no more clicking around like a crazy person trying to get to the right block. I do like that. Next up, build your own post templates without having to code them manually or rely on third-party tools. So now that we've got all of these great new full site editing blocks, wouldn't it be great if we could use them to make post templates? Well, now you can. I've been using things like Toolset and Alimentor to design page templates in WordPress for years now. In fact, I'm perfectly happy with that solution, but it looks like WordPress core wants to claw some of that functionality back that it previously outsourced to third-party tools. So in WordPress 5.8, you can now design your own page templates and then use them on any page or post that you create. Now, this feature will be disabled by some themes. So if you download 5.8 and you go check to make your own page template and you don't see the option, 
you may need to either switch themes or add a bit of custom code to the functions.php file to turn it back on because your theme disabled it. So just a little bit of caution there. Go ahead and check it out. It's pretty good, but it's just a starting point. So when you start to add all of these pieces together, the new full site editing blocks, the page templates, we can now basically make dynamic sites inside of WordPress. And one of the new blocks is called the query loop block. I'm making this its own section because you can use this query loop block to basically build out a very customized uh, category specific post view. Uh, WordPress itself says to think of it as a more complex and powerful latest blog post. I agree, that's a good way to think of it. I would like to see more. Uh, there's things you can do inside of Toolset and Elementor already that you can't quite touch yet using the query loop block, but this is a good start. WordPress wants to make doing layouts and design easier right inside of the Gutenberg editor with something called pattern suggestions. So now the pattern transformations tool will suggest block patterns based on the block that you're currently using. Right now, this only works with the query block and the social icon block, but this should be expanded as more patterns are added. WordPress's goal is to help you get inspiration for how to design your site without leaving the editor. But as I already mentioned earlier in the video, I feel like they're pretty far away from that actually being a reality where people are just going to a blank page in WordPress and then designing a website without using a page builder. So that's about it. Now there are a few more things, small features, stability improvements, and bug fixes that I haven't already mentioned. However, they can lead up to big quality of life improvements depending on your use case. Some things I haven't really gone over in this video are gonna be things like embedding PDFs is now a whole lot easier. You don't need any third-party tools to do it. There's more support for uh, the latest emojis that just came out. And there's improvements to existing blocks, like an option to adjust the padding between columns. Finally, that is long needed. So should you go ahead and update? Well, my advice is no, not quite yet. You can go ahead and test it out in staging if you want, but personally, I always wait for at least the first patch release before even doing any testing, certainly before updating. So a little bit on version numbers here. I've covered this before on this channel, but this is considered a minor update because WordPress is moving from 5.7 to 5.8. That second number is changing. That second number changing means that they're adding new features. New features often means new bugs. Once they add a third number, so that'll be a 0.1 to the end of the version number, 5.8.1, that will be considered the first patch release. This will usually fix any of the lingering bugs that weren't identified or squashed before the update was pulled out of beta and presented to the public. So once again, you'll always want to test and back up things before you do any updates, but that's the point where I would actually think about using these features on a live site. All right, so that's gonna do it. Remember, be safe, always have a backup, stay self-hosted when possible, and may your conversion rates be high. I'll see you in the next video.